Hello, gentlemen. My name is Paul Robson. I am the founder of Manifesto and the European Men's Gathering. And this is a video about dealing with anger. So in gonna, I'm going to cover in this recording, uh, what are the warning signs about anger and what to look out for to make sure this is not an issue? Uh, what is it? What is it that makes it that anger is a growing problem in our society at the moment, and probably going to get a lot worse in general before it gets better? Uh, and then, thirdly, what is it that we can actually do concretely about anger, and how do we work with it in the manifesto? So, starting with about warning signs, do you notice irritability? Do you notice that you are watching destroy videos on YouTube, or you are uh, developing other habits of consuming content with violence, uh, could be video games, could be hardcore pornography, could be uh, anything that you're getting a kick out of and you're noticing that you're doing it more than what you think is good for you. And you know, this nagging feeling that maybe this is taking up more of my time and energy and it's becoming kind of like a, 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 an excuse to, to disconnect and get away from things. Uh, and, and you're noticing that, you know, especially in the case of, you know, more extreme stuff like hardcore pornography, violent pornography, uh, you're rewiring your brain and your own sexuality in a way that's probably not going to be good for you in the long term. Um, could also be a lot of this is often about like self-sabotage in your own projects or in your relationships uh, that we kind of just do stupid things. We lash out at weird times uh, and we kind of are, yeah, are, are, it's difficult to build something in the long term because of emotional instability uh, that comes along or we have a hard time connecting with people. This, this the feeling of numbness is obviously the long-term consequence uh, of suppressing uh, anger for a long time. We're just unable to connect to our emotions in general and we just feel apathetic or you know, disconnected from everything that's happening. So uh, this is, of course, something that we are very aware of in the culture when it comes to men. Uh, the culture generally tells men that, uh, and as we hear this all the time now, is that men need to become more vulnerable. They need to be more in touch with their feelings and able to express their feelings. Uh, and they need to learn how to cry. Uh, that's one of the most central things. And there's this entire industry. You can find websites with therapists and all kinds of people who have lots and lots of pictures of men crying together. Um, and, and, and talking about men being able to cry. And of course, there can be a truth in that. There's often a connection between sadness and anger as well. Um, and I, I think that, you know, this is this, the video here is going to focus though on, on anger as well. And, and there's this kind of like weird paradoxical catch 22, because, you know, while we told all this time that men need to be more vulnerable and in touch with their feelings and stuff like that, then at the same time, then male anger, male aggression <laughs> is seen as toxic and bad and you know it needs to be kind of like held back or something like that like as soon as we actually have a man who gets angry then he kind of gets shamed or put you know pushed back or something like that so we, it's very hard to, for for men to meet that so what's needed well what we need is for men to attain anger mastery we need to train men to be able to direct and use their anger in productive ways because in Manifesto, we believe, and we found this to be true, and we believe that this has been the case always and will continue to be the case, that anger is not only an integral part of being a man, but it is an essential and a good part of being a man. Anger is what will help you to find clarity, to find direction, and will help you to be able to find your purpose and what you're supposed to be doing with yourself. And if you're not in touch with your anger, then you're never going to be very able to commit yourself to something very meaningful in your life because you'll, you'll probably disconnect too often uh, from it. So, so you need to be able to be able to tap in to that anger to really find your power to be able to move forward in your life, especially if you're a young man, if you're under 40 years old or something like that, then this is uh, absolutely essential. So how do we do this? Well, you know, if you're, you know, we're not talking about childhood trauma and, and suppression of child, childhood trauma and stuff like that this time. That's probably an issue for most of us. It's a basically a bottomless thing to go look at. But what we're going to look at now is as an adult man, you know, you're 20 years or older than that. Um, how do you tap into your, into your anger again? Because, you know, the thing is when you open up 
to your emotions, then you're opening up to an internal chaos. Uh, and there's a lot of it down there. And you can, if you just go down there, you can really get lost. Uh, and so it's really important to remember all the time that you know your feelings are not you and you are not your feelings. Your feelings are something that provide information for you that you can act on. And, and so you know, just following your feelings in the moment all the time is probably not is probably gonna give you pretty bad results uh, in the long term, especially. It's not a good approach, you know, for for women, I think women are hard coded in a way which makes it a, you know, in many cases, not all cases, but in many cases, it's a better. Uh, tool for them is navigating by their emotions. But for men, uh, we need to be able to understand our emotions, to be able to uh, look at them, but we need to learn how to be proactive about our emotions, especially about our anger, instead of just being reactive about it. And this is uh, something that is not easy to do because men are generally looking for safe ways of expressing their anger when they start doing this. And, and the thing with expressing your anger is that it's never going to be safe. Or if it's 100% safe, then it's probably also completely irrelevant. So it's always coming with a, a risk of hurt, of rejection. You know, could be hurting yourself, could be hurting somebody else, could be some kind of loss that's coming out of it. But anger is basically a natural reaction to the need of setting a boundary. So it's a way of saying no. It's if something comes too close, it, it invades your personal sphere or something like that, uh, then, then anger is a natural reaction to reestablish that boundary again. And it's from the suppression of anger that uh, the kind of forces build up and then it often explodes in a far too powerful way. And that's when anger becomes very, very dysfunctional. So recognizing these things and, you know, in the beginning, you're going to be clumsy. It's going to mess up. It's going to create more problems probably than what it's going to solve. And there's a whole you know literature around about around working with this um uh, but what we find is that eventually as you go more and more into this that anger dealing with anger more becomes about assertiveness training it's about it's about being able to you know instead of navigating between being dominant and, and aggressive uh, and being submissive and kind of always letting go and, and being able to be assertive to making it clear what is it you stand for knowing that for yourself but not being able not not having a need to push that onto other people but being able to stand firm within your own kind of area or something like that and so we need to find ways of practicing uh, this 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 uh, expression of anger or using anger um, and there are of course many ways of doing this um, the, the area where we do not recommend you to do it is one-on-one -on -one with a therapist uh, it's a very artificial setting it's very constructed especially with a, a female therapist we think that uh, it we don't believe that it, it has a very good uh, approach um, but certainly group settings uh, the more realistic you can make them the better it is um, but you need to find this balance between safety and um and, and, and realism as well. And so one of the really good places to do this, of course, is inside a sports club. Uh, any competitive sport will generally provide plenty of opportunity where you can get in touch with that aggression, with that anger, or that kind of like conflictual meeting with other people. Uh, and you can learn how to deal with these uh, feelings and emotions as they come up. Um, one of the challenges with this is, of course, is that any group of men doing a sport together and we recommend male sports because that's where anger can have its clearest expression um, and there's a kind of honor code often between men um, but that honor code and that culture around the anger can be very different and a lot of sports clubs are run by you know it, it can be very random or it can be very arbitrary what kind of culture they have in dealing with these kinds of things and so you know different sports have different cultures of course um, but there's often not an explicit conversation about what's happening. And I've been at a, a football club where there were, I actually myself was involved in a little intertanglement with one of the other players. And it was very interesting trying to start a conversation afterwards in this club, which with a group of men who obviously weren't used to having uh, talking about this kind of thing. Um, and, and it's certainly in the reflection together with a group of other people, which is the most valuable. Uh, that's where you really get growth and insight into and actually understanding how other people have, have received this. So this is generally very different to what, what, how, how we think people have, have, have received it as well. Um, so yeah, you know, groups of friends, sports clubs is a very good way of doing that. Um, in Manifesto, then we've really designed the European men's gathering. And the first two days of that gathering is very much a boot camp on anger mastery. Uh, and we do that by pushing men to their absolute limits, whether they're like, you know, elite sport persons or seven year old, then each man is individually pushed into that limit. And we, we, we put them in a kind of tribal situations where there's divisions and we present them with very complex moral 
quandaries or paradoxical situations where they're challenged to do things which they normally wouldn't do, which would go against their normal moral code. Um, and where there's also actual reason to be um, angry <laughs> with other men uh, in, in that kind of thing. So it's a, we kind of tap as much as we can into those real um, emotions. And then importantly, you know, we, 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 we go through those experiences. You don't have a lot of preparation for what's going to happen. You have no idea what's going to happen, actually. So it, it kind of hits you and you just have to act in the moment. Uh, but then afterwards, then we have good opportunity to kind of get like a theoretical framework and then to actually talk about what actually happened uh, there as well. And, and, and it's really through that process of mirroring and seeing, you know, looking back and, and, and understanding the way that you acted and being able to reflect on it together with other people and, and hear how they perceived you as well. Uh, and the surprise that comes from that and seeing how other men act and noticing how like, oh, <laughs> we are all, all of us are kind of dealing with some of the same kinds of stuff uh, a lot of the time and, and hearing other men's reflections about how they're, acting out the same kinds of patterns in their own lives, which seems to be uh, an incredibly valuable thing. So yeah, that having, having that masculine fellowship, that male fellowship is really a core thing. You know, when, when female are in, females are in the room, you'll just notice if you're ever in like a kind of a bit of a heated discussion, uh, you can just notice, and this is the core thing that we've seen with Manifesto as well, is that when we're just men in the room, then we can really have an extremely high level of disagreement, but still maintaining a basic level of respect and that kind of gentlemanly code of honor in that, you know, we're actually reaching to find truth and we're all learning to grow here and understand things better uh, and to learn more through the interaction as well. So there isn't this kind of peacocking needing to dominate other people in the same way in that same thing. And that's something that we spend a lot of time developing on manifesto. And, and, and I think it's, it's probably the, the core aspect of a good men's work organization. That's one that's explicit uh, and have like a process for dealing with disagreements where we, where we welcome it and we, and, and we welcome in different views and, and we respect the man, but we actually challenge the ideas uh, that, that he's coming with. So yeah, if that sounds inspiring and interesting for you, um, then, you know, we have lots of different ways of engaging. Um, and, you know, if you have a group of men that you're able to have this kind of conversation with, this kind of approach with, uh, and where you're actually doing meaningful things in the world, you know, this is where obviously it has the biggest impact is when you're working with other people. And this is what we do on Manifesto is we try and do projects together where there's potential for disagreements and where people, you know, let you down or, or mess up or something like that. We, we feel these emotions towards each other, but then we deal with them in a very direct way under a specific set of values. Um, then that's the most helpful thing. Uh, so if you want to get a taste of that, then we're holding the European Men's Gathering in the month of August, uh, beginning of August in Denmark uh, this year, uh, as we do every single year. Uh, and we're about 140 guys coming from about 30 different countries. Uh, and, and it's really a really deep dive into uh, leadership and uh, understanding our own role and being able to work with the challenges that we're facing in our society at the moment in, in leading other men. Uh, so yeah, I hope that's uh, interesting. And if you, I'd love to hear any comments or reflections that you might have on anger and dealing with anger um, in, in, in your comments to this video. So thanks a lot. And uh, that's it for now.